so sorry about the, uh, the, the camera issue here. But uh, after you learn to kind of feel where the song is, you're counting along with the song, you can figure out where the song's subdivisions are. Meaning that the main beat is not just the, the only thing rhythmically that's happening in the song. Sometimes stuff, stuff is happening in between. But, 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 you know, or whatever. And little by little is here. Here's the beat for little by little. It's going bum, 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 bum. In between the beat and it's really syncopated. That's what people call in between the beats. Uh, you're playing on the subdivisions that are not the one, the two, three, the three, or the four, but the ands. Okay, so sometimes you can subdivide eight times a beat, or sixteen times. Okay, you can do eighths or sixteenths, or you could do a shuffle, which means long, short, 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 long, short. short. That's kind of like this. All right? Okay. Pretty basic there. And then an odd meter, you can do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. No strap, you know, I'm just gonna put that down before I hurt myself. <clears throat> okay. So odd meter, all right? So there are a lot of different things happening in this next category here where you're counting with the song odd meter might fit better over here, you know. I didn't really think this through too much. But this is the process, the basic process. And the third thing you're gonna do is to observe, observe patterns, okay? And when you observe patterns, what does that mean? You're gonna notice that bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. It's the same thing over and over again, okay? But that's not just a big observe the patterns question. It's also a micro thing where you're starting to see this. What's the one I'm emphasizing? The one I'm emphasizing is the one that is kind of longer and more distance between that and then the other ones, okay? And so what you have is kind of a longer distance and then a shorter distance. And that helps you, for instance, when you're doing a 15 step, 15 step, it's gonna look like this. One, two, three, four, five. One M, two M, three M, four M, five M. Bum, 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 bum. Right there, okay? So it goes one and four, five. One and four five and four five and four five. Okay, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now when you're able to do all of this and kind of get it working, and you know it's kind of a slow and uh, really, really rich and rewarding but challenging process, you can begin to internalize any song. Any song can become your teacher, and it will never get tired of teaching you because all you're doing is listening to it. The song is not gonna lose patience with you. The song is not gonna have to eat and therefore work and then not teach you, you know? The song is not gonna be uh, down when your internet connection is down, you know? Unless you get all your music from YouTube. <laughs> but the song is always gonna be there to teach you, okay? And in the beginning, you may need some more guidance, you know? Um, hopefully, this website thing that I'm gonna hopefully launch by the end of the year will, will really help out with this. It's a whole video course idea that I have to explain each one of these in really, really great detail to run it by donations only. The idea, the ideas presented here, okay, if you apply these, all of a sudden, songs can become your teacher. And if that ideally happens, okay, there's something even better than playing Radiohead. I'm gonna say it, this is blasphemy. This is something even better than playing Radiohead. <laughs> How could you? How dare you? The thing that is better than playing your favorite music is expressing your own musicality. It's to find your own musical voice. It's to be able to get to the point where you have something in your head or something in your heart um, and you can suddenly put it out there. There's just something that happens when you listen to your favorite song with your favorite artist or 
you read an amazing poem or you love this book or this TV show or this film, a lot of times, I won't say every time, but a big part of that is because it almost took the words out of your mouth or, or it, it resonated with you or you could relate to it. And that's a very powerful thing because you feel like you connect with that. And there's something deep inside each of us musically. I think that's why we all love music. Uh, I only have one friend who doesn't like music. He doesn't care for it. I don't, shouldn't say he doesn't like it. He's weird. But uh, all of us have this inclination to music because something inside of us is trying to get out. And I have a feeling that if we don't scratch that itch, if we don't find an outlet, if we don't find a way to make what we're trying to do musically happen in some way, we'll always be a little bit frustrated. <laughs> Until we hear a song that maybe kind of touches that frustration. It's like, yes, okay, Tom York said it for me. <laughs> you know, right? But the thing is, why? You guys have guitars. You guys have some, some of you guys have multiple, multiple guitars, okay? There's no reason why we can't find this type of deep, deep satisfaction and enjoyment from our own, own instrument uh, without kind of feeling lost, you know? We have some tools, some, some real uh, basic kind of foundational uh, things to challenge ourselves with today, right? So, um, easier said than done, you know, nothing comes with pure talent or, or your ear alone. Um, it takes hard work, you know, I won't lie, um, but if you're willing to do it, if you're willing to commit to the process, right answers and wrong answers included, all part of the process, uh, I can tell you that it's incredibly amazing. Um, it's, yeah, I, I don't know what to say, like, um, I don't tell people this, but I think I listen to like my own stuff quite a lot. It sounds weird when I say that, but because, not because I'm like vain, I'm trying to like, you know, grow a big head and become arrogant or something, <laughs> but it's because I feel something when I, I play something and it's me. I can, I can hear me. And that's like, when you hear your own voice, it's like that video where that, that deaf girl, she got an ear implant and she, they turned it on in the doctor's office. She heard her own voice for the same time, at, for the first time. And it was like the most amazing thing. I, I like, I really, I was moved to, you know, to, uh, yeah, a very emotional place when I saw that video. Similar thing happens with, uh, with music for me. Um, hearing my own music, musical voice kind of be expressed. It's, it's something that, um, it's very profound. But uh, anyway, uh, that's where I'm at. <clears throat> That's what I had to offer today. I hope it was of, of value to you guys. Um, I came from California to share, and uh, that doesn't make what I say more valuable or anything, but uh, I really appreciate that this moment <laughs> is happening, that we're actually doing this. It's, it's pretty crazy. So thank you for, for being here. Um, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you for listening. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, so I guess maybe the last thing is, is just to open it up to anything you want to ask me. It can be musically, it just be about me, it doesn't, doesn't matter. A anything you like. Hmm. Are you still filming? Oh, should I still be? No, you can. Go ahead. Um, well, maybe when you were talking in the beginning about like the scales and stuff like that, how you like got into it. Did you grow, go like over the piano, or like b because it's kind of hard to get like the view of how the stuff works, mm -hmm. like on the sm well on the small scale or. Okay, so you're, you're saying kind of because like, how, on, did on the, I be, how did I begin transcribing melodies? Yeah. Did it happen on the piano? Because for from my point of view, it's like kind of easier on the piano because you have like the black keys. The white keys, it's like divided by... If it's by easier for you on piano, do it on piano. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I do wish I could play that. Whatever way is easiest for you. I came in through as piano, sort of, but also singing. That's how I came in. Hmm. Also, if you play guitar, don't learn piano just for the sake of this. You know, Although piano is an amazing instrument, it can help you learn some things on guitar that you otherwise wouldn't have, or help you gain a different approach, a different perspective. But if you can kind of understand this concept here, really it works on any instrument that has frets or you know has half steps. You use violin, you use your 
I'm really good at you know staying in tune. But this is just kind of a more universal Western music concept. It, it looks like kind of a piano keyboard, da 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 da, because the major scale was around a long time before the piano ever was. But you can do it on a guitar. You just use one string. Use the A string. A string open. Second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, eleventh fret, twelfth fret. Twelve half steps to an octave. Um, and slowly but surely, you'll be able to accumulate experience that will eventually become uh, useful uh, for you as you kind of build small, small, small observations into these little ideas, into kind of a more elegant, bigger idea. And then these ideas combine with other ideas, and it's just going to be, wow, I know what's going on in this song. And it's just like this huge light bulb that kind of uh, goes off when you analyze a song this way. Did that help answer your question? Well, yeah. And I have one more. Yeah. You really start, when, when you're analyzing harmony, you really start from like when you're trying to figure out the chor chords, let, let's say the chord progression, you really start from the high notes of the chord. Um, Because I when, when, when I try to do it, yeah. I, I start with bass, bass line. That's wonderful yeah. if you start with the bass line. Bass line actually gives away the chord a little bit more often than the higher notes. Um, that's from my experience and uh, it's, it's pretty popular because your chord is anchored by the lowest note. But to be a little bit more general about your answer, you start with whatever note is obvious. Just look at a song like it's a puzzle. Like how do you do a jigsaw puzzle? You start with the corner pieces because they're the most obvious and then you go in. You don't start on the words that you don't know for a crossword puzzle. You start with the words you do know. And the words that you do know help fill in the ones that you don't know because of the clues they give. That's how you do any puzzle. Sudoku, same thing. You got to do the ones that you can do first, and then you can do the ones that you don't know how to. And musically, it's the same thing. If you got da 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 da, -da but you don't know the high note, if you go da 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 da, hmm, and you kind of know that those are kind of the same, but then there's something else that's a little bit higher, then you fill in the, the thing, uh, the, the song puzzle. You look at it as a song puzzle from outside in. And what I mean by that is you don't have to figure out a song forwards. You can figure it out backwards. You can figure it out many different directions. You can start with the last note of the song and work backwards. If you hear one really loud note in the middle of the chord, maybe you can start with the middle note of the chord. It's whatever's most obvious to you. So piano, easiest, go for it. But bass note of the chord, easiest, go for it. Start from there. But you have to start. You have to start with something. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, the rest won't come. Cool. So th those were both very good questions. Very, very good questions. <clears throat> I just wonder uh, if you, whether you think that uh, people of any age can start yes. to learn like you, like you did when you were a child. Yes. Do you think so? Yes, I believe so, 100%. I believe we are all making music, even if we aren't playing an instrument from an early age. As soon as we go... Da, 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 da. Oh, you guys might not know Inspector Gadget. As soon as I'm humming that, or I kind of like recognize a certain song, it's like that music is actually playing in our head. We're all making music on some level in our head. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to distinguish this music from that music, this artist from that artist, stuff we like from stuff we don't like. There's already musical capacity for everybody. But like I said, Some people are going to be stronger at one thing than another. Some people are going to sound like they're tone deaf in the beginning. And I've worked with people who feel like, man, I just can't get this. But through time and patience and work, there's always going to be progress. Now, can I guarantee someone's going to progress as quickly as another person? Everybody's different. But that question of can everybody enter in at any age and kind of build their musicianship? Absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't be a music teacher if I didn't believe that. Because I would just be teaching people I didn't believe could ever uh, make progress. And time and time again, I've been demonstrated uh, the opposite, that people can. Uh, I've got students that are over 50. I've got students that are seven. Their brains are like sponges, and it's great. And I argue with my students who are over 50. Just kidding. They're, they're, they're pretty, pretty, uh, <laughs> they're pretty uh, easy to work with. Uh, but the idea is, any age, you know, everybody can enter in and 
learn something about music in some form or another, okay? If anything, this should help you appreciate people who are really doing music on, at a very high level even more. This is just like so exciting when, when you go to a concert and you see a musician doing something and you're just like, yeah, that's, that's mind blowing. I think he just did this to this to this. I'm not really sure, but I think he just, yeah, that's crazy. He did the alternate tuning and he went from this chord to this chord, but he had some like open strings that were droning and then he just created this beautiful chord that had some like tension between the notes, this, this, this dissonance, and then it kind of resolved. You start to like analyze music in such a way where it's, you're, you're almost, you're almost in the world of the song. And anybody can get into that in some degree or another. And that, whatever you get from that, you can take away and, and do something with it. Yeah, does, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, sure, thanks. <laughs> sure, sure, that's a good question. Um, any other questions here? Well, maybe another question about the request. Would you care to play some? <laughs> Would I play something? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, uh, I, I guess I, I hadn't prepared um, anything. But uh, what would you? Well, do we have any questions over here first before? Well, thank you for for joining. This is kind of uh, cool, right? Um, you're like, nah, this is I walk into this is crazy. It's boring. No, uh, no. Thank you for being here too. Um, but <clears throat> uh, what would you like to hear? Well, will you play more songs? More than one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> because we'll start, we'll start with one. Okay, well, we'll one. then something yours? Something of mine? Yeah. Uh, man, uh, now I'm going to get nervous. Now I'm going to get really nervous. I'm going to have to drink this uh, non-alcoholic beverage. <laughs> Don't tell them it's not alcoholic. Too late. All right. Okay. Uh, well, man, okay. Let's see, maybe I'll play something. Fall away 
I wasn't holding the phone, I would be clapping. <laughs> cool. Hey, thank you for listening. That's very, very respectful. Uh, yeah, that's a song of mine. Um, it's, I don't even remember what it's called. What's it called? Um, it's on YouTube, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I forgot the name, uh, my own song. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's like a D minor to a uh, C. It's the one chord minor, minor five, a flat six, kind of a major seven there. Melodic movement on the flat seven chord. Minor four chord, minor one chord, major flat three chord, major flat seven chord. And that's the chorus, and then the ending just has some melodic movement. Sort of like that. I think I messed that up. <laughs> Sorry, wasn't prepared. Well, it's but your song. It's gonna be a flat six, and then four kind of six that are parallel moving up through that, and then one chord, and then the parallel six kind of moving back down, and then similar thing that was happening here and I don't know if you <laughs> care to know a musical theory explanation between uh, you know behind what's in the song but that's kind of uh, how I understand my own song and uh, I took some of those concepts from everywhere I hope it doesn't sound like a pure copy of my, my influences but definitely you know if you look at um, videotape which is one of my favorite songs you, you hear uh, which Tom York didn't invent, obviously. He's, he's not the first musician to ever do that. But it's beautiful, and I kind of was inspired by that. And so, um, yeah, I think that's maybe an idea that was floating around in my head when I was sitting down and, you know, um, trying to figure out, you know, something to write. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I don't know, how are we on time? What, does anybody have the time right now? I need to get out of here by 8.30. <laughs> It's almost eight. Almost eight. Okay, so we've got some more time before they come in. Hmm? Um, wow. All right. Um, okay, so that was, uh, yeah, that was a request, not, a, not quite a question. I but, have uh, a question. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, you were asked on YouTube about uh, Tom's approach to music. Uh -huh. uh, is it emotional or intuitive? And so I would like to ask you, what, yeah. what is your approach when you're composing your music? If you if you say to yourself, oh, this is really cool, flat seven, I, yeah, I, would, yeah. I would do that. Or if you just, <laughs> what's, what's your... Uh, wow, thank you for asking. That's like a really good question. What is my approach? Well, my approach is a mess. <laughs> my approach is uh, very intuitive and very uh, kind of observant. So those two, I think, are a little bit different. Like you, you sense something or you feel something. Those are a little bit different. Uh, it's emotional. It's also cerebral. Like, you know, um, I feel like sometimes, sometimes I want to just get something out there that feels a certain way. But other times I'm thinking about like, well, I want it to go this way. And then I want it to move so that it smoothly fits into the next chord. It's very cerebral, you know. Um, sometimes it's very like a burst of inspiration. I just go with it and the song is done. Other times it's taken me like over a year, maybe longer to write certain songs. Um, the process sometimes is lyrics first. It starts out as some kind of reflection or journal entry or poetry that I'm kind of writing and then I ended up setting, setting that to music or maybe changing it so that it fits a melody better. Or sometimes I start with the melody, sometimes I start with the chord progression on the guitar, sometimes I start with a beat you know, that I program or I play a little bit of drums too. Um, yeah, but I make sure that I record my ideas, and there's probably going to be hundreds of hours of stuff that you guys will never hear because I don't think it's good enough. So that might be one thing that kind of restricts uh, my process a little bit is if I think it's good enough, you know. Um, <clears throat> but the more constraints you put on yourself, you say, hey, I want to start 
with music theory, or hey, I want to start with uh, kind of this feeling, or I want to start with th this line, this this lyrical phrase. The more restraints you constraints you put on your songwriting process, um, I think the more you can get done. It's not necessarily going to be the greatest song you always write, but it's nice to have constraints to work within so that you're not just bouncing off every wall and you don't know where to go and you have a million choices and you're just kind of paralyzed and you can never make a decision. Uh, sometimes it's good to have just a few choices and give yourself a few choices just to go forward with that. Um, I don't know why that turned into like songwriting advice. I haven't written you know, as many songs as you know a lot of other people out there. But I like to think that the songs I have written and I call kind of finished, uh, songs that are a reflection of what I value in the process of songwriting. Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> really good question. Man, I didn't anticipate yeah, that. Thanks for asking. Because yeah. I thought, um, I thought I didn't know, but uh, if I uh, get the technical about some things, uh, for example, I did photography when I was sure. younger, and uh, I became very technical and very into it. Uh -huh. And uh, and I think it kind of spoiled my spontaneity in it, mm -hmm. my intuition. Mm -hmm. So I thought if if this all all these things didn't happen to you and to your to your songwriting, so so yeah, it's it's good to hear you're you're um, intuitive or you consider yourself intuitive still. Yeah, yeah. Although although all these things are in your head probably when you when you pick a guitar as well, making music. So. I know. Yeah, that's why I, I don't ask. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> that's, that's, yeah, it is a great question. And ultimately, I think it starts to become a little bit beyond music theory when we're talking about some of these things. It goes into, like, what is the creative process. But I, I heard something really, really wise from a student of mine that I was helping with music theory. He's actually um, uh, into films. Um, he wanted to be a director. And he told me that you know, genius comes in many forms. And sometimes genius, it happens to you all at once. And somebody writes a song, you know, they're in the car or they're on the subway or the tram somewhere and they have a whole song in their head, it just comes to them. I'm not like that. Other people, they write like kind of one seed of an idea and then revise, 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 put stuff on it, make more revisions and all these iterations of it eventually become something they're really, really satisfied with. Sculpting maybe is more similar to that, right? Chip away, chip away, chip away. And uh, genius comes in many forms. And so I think uh, the genius I'm striving for, uh, which I don't necessarily think I've ever attained, is a genius that I think, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of all these different things, you know. Um, to, that's